Oh, you got her, dude. She's down. Let's go. Dude, I just shot a deer of a lifetime. Freaking smoked him. One with nature, and if you're a believer, one with God. Definitely gets your heart pumping. Boy, you are in trouble. Ball Obsession Podcast. All right, everybody, welcome back to another Fall Obsession Podcast episode. Super stoked to be back on here with you guys again. Our podcast is driven by our friends over at Elite Archery, and I'll talk more about them later. I am Sam with Fall Obsession, your host, and I'm super stoked to be here recording in person here in North Texas with my good friend Kelly Cato again. Welcome back to the podcast, brother. Thanks for having me. So, I'm excited to share, share the story. Yeah, we got another awesome story in store for you guys. If you guys have missed it too, um, Kelly has been on here with us before talking about his Texas bighorn sheep hunt that he had back in 2004, I think it was. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a two-part episode series, 61 and 62. You guys need to go listen to it. It's some of the best podcasts we've had on here, so be sure that you hit that up. Actually, I don't even think I've told you, but those episodes are the third most downloaded podcast episodes we've ever had out, oh, of, really? out of 80 episodes. Wow, that's so, cool. Yeah. They're, they're pretty popular, and, and folks have really enjoyed listening to them. So. Oh, great. I appreciate being able to, to get that documented and, and, and shared. And it, was, it was a good story. It yeah, good absolutely. Yeah, for sure. So we are, we are videoing this podcast, too. This is, this is not at all something that we've done before on our podcast. So yeah. this is definitely a first. But first off, thank you for hosting us in your shop out here. Thanks for coming out. I got an awesome little setup here in your in your – I don't know if it's your man cave, but kind of your, it's your my, man. It's your, my shop. Your shop. Yeah. yeah. It's just a shop. Yeah. So. It's just a shop. But if you guys are watching the video, you will see there is a, a freshly killed pronghorn head sitting on the table <laughs> here between me and Kelly. And if you guys are listening in the audio and you want to see it, go check out the YouTube video of this podcast. It's all recorded, like I said. But, man, so you killed this thing just a few days ago like it's yeah, it's well, barely out of the field it, it, it's not even obviously not even at the taxidermist yet yeah, that's so. right I'm, and after this is over that's where i'm going i'm going to the taxidermist so it's we caught you just in time just in time <laughs> yeah so uh yeah, i shot it on saturday and today is monday so it's two it's a few days two old. days ago or yeah i guess something like that yeah man so this is and i know we'll get into it but you're kind of on a journey right now yeah. to accomplish something that very few even have the opportunity to do in the Absolutely. state of Texas. I'm so blessed. So why don't you, we're going to, and another thing we're going to do here on camera in front of everybody, and we're going to learn this together somewhat. Oh, yeah. We're going to score this thing roughly. I'm no official score, but we're going to see what he tapes out at. Yeah. Um, so that's another interesting aspect of this, but to start, tell us, tell us why this hunt was important to you why why you what led up to it and why you wanted to to kill this thing in yeah, texas absolutely of all places. absolutely so you know like you mentioned before and 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 uh, your listeners can go back on that podcast in 2004 i got the opportunity to hunt desert bighorn um it was a draw through the texas parks and wildlife uh not i didn't win the grand slam where you get it all in right. one draw but uh but i wanted to accomplish that uh get a grand slam since uh since you know my f- outside of the whitetail the 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 pinnacle of that uh was was my first animal in that in that series which is the desert bighorn yeah um and so i kind of started where everybody else finishes i started with the big guy and then came back yeah. down you know and was just truly blessed and, and that was just amazing but just here lately, uh, you know, getting closer to retirement and some other things going on in life, and, and you get to thinking about uh, being more purposeful with, uh, with, with your, your decisions and things to go do and things that you want to get done in yeah. your lifetime, you know. Um, and, uh, and completing the, the Grand Slam was at the top of my hunting stuff. You know, I've spent a lifetime hunting, and, you know, I'm just – 
I thought, you know what, I've got to be, I got to be purposeful and, and, and really start seeking that out. Yeah. And so, um, I've got the desert bighorn and I've got a white tail that I shot off a, a place right next to the historic Wagner ranch. So both of those are great stories. And then, um, uh, so my cousin, anyway, he put his, he put a, some, uh, one of the farmers out in West Texas, he put that, put that property in this, uh, wildland wildlife program. Yeah. Um, he put that, he put that land in, in that program and, uh, and did some surveys and stuff and, and we'll have him on later yeah, absolutely. to talk about that program and what it does for, uh, for wildlife in Texas and stuff. It's a great deal. But uh, my my cousin Mark Pruitt out in uh, out Whiteface, out in Whiteface, Texas, uh, did this thing, and and uh, I had talked to him about my journey and and you know what's on my bucket list, you know, a mule deer and an antelope, and and as, as fate would have it, he he just got on a mission, you know, and went and figured out how to make it happen, and he he got some he got some tags and. He he sent me a a text one day a picture of two tags and he said well I guess you better I guess you better get your gun ready we're going hunting <laughs> and I so I got these two tags I yeah. think I shared them with you that day and yeah. I I was like oh my gosh you know I was just so excited for for so many reasons and and you know hunting to me like I'm sure a lot of your listeners it's so much more than pulling the trigger and killing an animal it's yeah. about the experience it's about family it's a spiritual journey it's it's truly a journey that you can mark you know, life by, yeah. you know, as you, as you go through and, um, you know, and you share that with other people. And the fact that I was able to share it with my cousin, you know, and, and he, he kind of set it all up and, and he'd been trying to, uh, you know, put in for antelope hunts to get a tag for me, you know, because this was my wow. journey. And, uh, it just kind of shows you what selfless people are and, and, Absolutely. and, and all that. So, so it was, it was a very meaningful hunt on top of the Texas Slam, or Grand Slam. Um, and so, yeah, he, he, uh, he sent me that picture of that tag and said, we're going hunting. So, That's awesome. Yeah. So the, what, all, what all is in the Texas or the, the Grand Slam in Texas, basically? Because we, we got the big horn, the prong horn. Oh, there's a whitetail mule deer. Is that it? Or is there, there's something else in there? No. no um, so there's the Grand Slam is, is a bighorn antelope whitetail and mule deer okay and then the texas slam includes a javelina and it does not include the desert bighorn because okay. they're so hard to get you I was, know? yeah i was gonna say and so you can still get a texas slam without getting a grand slam so so you're going for a grand slam and then a Texas I'm going Slam for plus a, the bighorn i'm going for a, a major <laughs> i'm going for a major and texas grand slam and a minor end Texas slam <laughs> is what I'm thinking. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. <laughs> right? Because, uh, you know, the, for, for, for me, if you take the desert bighorn out, for me, uh, the mule deer and the, and the pronghorn would be obviously the hardest ones for me to get. Right. Where, where I live and where, who I hunt with and where I hunt and all that. So, um, fortunately, um, Mark set me up with this one. So... Uh, the the difference is too in in the Texas Slam you have to get them all in one year. Oh, I see. So I've got a mule deer hunt scheduled out west Texas um, in uh, in November, and so hopefully I'll get a whitetail this year. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be hunting whitetail hard, and then uh, and then I've still got to set up a javelina hunt. At but that at that point you you got you got to yeah. go javelina hunt right yeah. just because you know you you don't want to miss history on. Well, I mean, you got to capitalize on it just after this alone, because pronghorn hunting in Texas, it, it, it's it's on the the rise. I, I from what I understand, but it up up till now, it really hadn't been something that I, I feel like it's been more in trial stages and trial seasons and stuff. Is kind of, and I don't know a whole lot about it, but I from what I from what I do know, that's kind of where it's been in in recent years. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, even even people that that were living that, that I spoke to in in Lubbock and Leveland and and Whiteface and Morton Muleshoe people out in that area, whenever I talked to them about antelope hunting, they were like, "Well, do you do you eat that?" And <laughs> and you know, is it is there a trophy pronghorn? Like like there was very little knowledge about 
antelope hunting out there, which yeah. kind of surprised me. Yeah. But evidently, it's it's uh, it's not a it's not a real common thing. So. Hmm. Well, tell us, tell us about the hunt. Tell us how how this went and how it all went down. And yeah. And we'll we'll break out a tape and get in the score in this Joker. Yeah, for sure. You know, um, for for the listeners that that. Uh, that, that listened to the desert bighorn and how grueling and how hard that was this is the other side of the coin <laughs> this is <laughs> fortunately uh, it was a, it was a very exciting hunt because of what it was um you know we uh, we we got in i got into town the, the night before uh before the hunt and uh, and my cousin mark pruitt out there um had had been surveying and scouting and stuff before so he he kind of had an idea of the general area where where we might find some yeah and so uh you know antelope hunting is different than than deer hunting where you know deer hunting you get up at four o'clock in the morning and you know scent free and you ease out there and you you know walk a few hundred yards and get in your stand or on a fence line or whatever yeah and this is not like that we you know got out of the house about seven and stopped by and got some biscuits and sausage and <laughs> <laughs> drove around and 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 uh and just just did a lot of glassing yeah. and then and, and uh so we did that for a few hours we we, we just kind of drove around and or a couple hours i guess and scouted it out and and looked and and we saw this this group of uh seven does and this and this buck and so pretty exciting deal you know we sat there and watched him for a little while and, and he asked me you know is this is do you want to shoot that one? Does that, do you like that one? And we're sitting in the truck and I'm glassing and, you know, I tried to do my due diligence before I went out there and learn as much as I could about antelope. Yeah. Um, got on a couple of websites and, um, but, uh, I definitely listened to, to fall obsessions podcast, you know, so I knew how, how, uh, how, what a treasure this was to be able yeah. to get an opportunity to do it. And like we spoke earlier, it's different whenever I can shoot 500 yards, 600, you know, yeah. versus 50 or 60. So yeah. not not the same as a bow hunt, but but uh, but I I, I did uh, I, I I understood what I had yeah. had the opportunity, and so it was open in morning. So I did you know like so many hunters do, where they start wondering, well, do I wait for something bigger, or do I capitalize on this opportunity, you know? And uh, so I had that, that uh, internal dilemma back and forth, and I just kept looking at him, and I thought, that's exactly what I think an antelope looks like. You know, that's... that's <laughs> that looks like a good It looks horn. like a good pronghorn to me, you know. And so um, I, I told him, yeah, that's, uh, I def- that's the one I want to get, you know. And, uh, of course, our range finders were no good at that point because they were so far away. Um, and so we, I pulled up Google earth and I, you know, I did that little, uh, measurement thing yeah. <laughs> where you can see, and, and, and I had them about 1300 yards, 1270 something, you know, something like that, 1300 yards. I can't shoot that far. So, um, out there it's so flat, man. It's just like a mirror, like a glass table, you know, and, and there, there's not a lot of elevation changes. <laughs> and so, so we looked at them and thought, man, how are we going to close this gap? Um, they were in in, in, a, in a plowed field with red dirt turned over, so they stuck out like a sore thumb, which stands the reason that anything else would stand out like a sore thumb, yeah. you know? And so uh, we we decided, well, we'll drive around, and there was a peanut field. So you know you're, in, you're not in good hunting area whenever, or for concealment anyway, when you're, your biggest thing to hide behind is like six inches and you're a <laughs> 230-pound man. Um, uh, and so, but that's what we had. We had the peanuts. So the peanuts were six, eight inches tall. And, um, we drove around to the field and, and we, we saw where they were and there was just enough, maybe the curvature of the earth. I wouldn't call it a, I wouldn't even call it an elevation change, but yeah. more of a curvature of the earth. It was just, and so, uh, um, you know, I could see, they could definitely see when we pulled up there and stopped, they, Two of the does stood up and were watching us. A couple of them were bedded down or whatever. And, and uh, all I could see was this guy's antlers or horns on sticking up on top of the peanut field. Yeah. So he's in a plowed field. There's a peanut field in between us. And then there's more plowed fields. So 
Mark and I get out, and we make a plan. We're going to, this is the best route, you know. And I got out, and one of the first things I noticed was that wind was straight on the back of my neck. And it was, <laughs> it was blowing. It was a nice breeze. It wasn't blowing hard, but it was yeah. a nice breeze to my back. And as a deer hunter, I was thinking, yeah, this is not going to work. Not going to work, yeah. It's 930 in the morning. I got two does looking at me. <laughs> the wind is to my back. The cards are stacked against me here. Yeah, I'm with my cousin, and, and we, got, we got guns and tripods and rangefinders and binoculars, and, and my cousin's not a, not a small guy either. <laughs> and uh, so we're getting out, and I'm thinking, how, how are we going to do this? Like, we've already got – they're already looking at us. We, we've lost the element of surprise and everything. Yeah. We're coming – our backdrop is the pickup truck, you know. I mean, they, <laughs> we are not something that they see a lot, so – I was, I was kind of curious, like, how are we going to do this? Well, Mark had gone out and, uh, you know, after listening to your podcast about the antelopes and stuff and the, and the, and the success y'all had with the, uh, the fan decoys, he, you know, we were talking on the phone. I said, man, we got to get our hands on a fan decoy. And so he went to buy Cabela's there in Lubbock, and, and they had one left, so he got it. And for those listening that, that have never seen it, it's a triangular package about, what do you think three foot long yeah maybe three, three foot three long. or a little longer maybe yeah a little a little there. triangle package and so there's a little cardboard box there and, and i'm looking at that thing wondering i don't know how that's gonna fold down to a decoy but you know but all, all right. obsession says that's the thing to go with <laughs> we're gonna use that yeah you learned a bunch of mediocre pronghorning tips from a bunch of amateur pronghorn hey i got it done right that's, <laughs> that, that was my, my basis of research was fall obsession and, and i'm sitting here with a big old antelope so hey we'll take it there you we'll go take it yeah yeah so he said well you want to want to just walk out there and that's well, you know you got this decoy you know maybe we can use that decoy he said, yeah let's let's take a look i don't know how to use it so we opened it up and and for people that, that have never seen one it doesn't even come with instructions but you open it up it doesn't come with instructions because if it did it would just say open umbrella that would be like the end of the instructions yeah it is truly just an umbrella, right? Yeah, so, it just unfolds, yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, just, boom, popped out like an umbrella. And, and we looked at that thing, and we both started laughing because, like I said, I'm not a small guy, and, and my cousin's bigger than I am. And we thought, oh, there's definitely no way in hell we're closing this distance <laughs> with these things who are already looking at us at 1,300 yards um, with this little umbrella. <laughs> but you know what? Open in morning, first day. It's either going to work or it's not. We're going to learn some lessons, you know, and that's, again, that's what hunting's about, right, is learning and, and putting that in your Rolodex and and, uh, and, and going from there. So we, that's what we decided we were going to do. We we're going to we're going to pop this thing out, Give hide it behind go. it the yeah. best we can. So if you can imagine two big old boys walking behind an umbrella trying to close the distance, <laughs> of, you know. <laughs> and so we take off walking, and we, we stop about every 100 yards, and we're walking single file, you know. I'm trying to hide behind him, and he's trying to hide behind the, the little umbrella. <laughs> and about every hundred yards, I'd lean over and glass. So, yep, same two does still looking at us. Everything else is still asleep or whatever, so we'll keep on moving. And we kept closing the distance, closing the distance. We walked all the way up to the peanut field, and that was that was where our, our waypoint was going to be, the peanut field. We'll get there. We'll range them from there. We'll try to come up with something. Yeah. Um, I, I was really thinking what I was going to do is belly crawl down those peanut rows. That was my, my plan is lay on my belly and just ooch, yeah. you know, until I got to where I, I – the plan was walk up there, we'll range them from there. Yeah. Then we'll decide on how far I would belly crawl from there to feel comfortable in that shot if it was a shot that, you know, that, that I wanted to take. Right. And so we stopped and we we dumped our tripods and you know got our range finders and we start doing all this stuff. Put my tripod down and put my my gun on it and I got on scope just to see, you know, what what was going on and I had it zoomed all the way out, so 18 power I think. And uh I saw that buck just kind of stand up and look right at us and uh he took off running. And I was like my cousin said, is he running? I said, he, he's running to us. He's coming to us. I said, yeah. So he gets on his binoculars. So now 
there's two big old boys sitting on either side of this pronghorn <laughs> umbrella that's sitting on the ground. And we're both looking going, oh, my gosh, he's mad. Look at him. He's, he's coming on. He's closing the distance. So I'm going between my scope and my range finder, and I'm, I'm like, man, if he gets – I'm going to let him go as if, – if, I'll shoot him at five yards if he wants to come that far. You know, I'm, let's not take any chances because, again, I appreciate the opportunity. Right. And, and, uh, and, and I, I, was, I was dialed in. I was very comfortable with my shot uh, up, to, up to 500 yards and, you know, and, and then pretty comfortable outside of that. But, but I knew at 500 there, it was game over. Um, but I would much rather take a 100-yard shot than a 500-yard oh, shot. Oh, yeah, for sure. Know, for sure. Just, and so – I'm on a tripod, I'm on my knees, I'm, I'm steady, crosshairs are balanced, and he's pissed, and he's closing the distance. And uh, I kept ranging him, and, and uh, he, got, he got to like 250 and stopped and just started stomping. And, and he was moving his head, walking side to side, uh, just like, like he just knew, okay, I know what the thing in the middle is, but I'm not sure what the two Yeah. The two things, friends, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the two things beside him, and and he was looking, and and the uh, the does had followed him, so he was there first, and then the does got all around him, and he was he he moved very strategically, and I don't know if it was by chance or if if it was something with an antelope, but he kept a doe between me and him most of the time, mm. and uh, and I was watching him, and I told my cousin, I said, he's at two fifty, if I get a broadside shot with no with no does in the, you know, in in this flat path i'm gonna i'm gonna take it yeah like, yeah put him down so we uh i waited and some of those does took off running and then he trotted off about 25 yards and i thought man he's he's not gonna give me a shot you know they they busted us like they should have yeah <laughs> right because <laughs> we did not we didn't follow any hunting <laughs> tactical stuff at all here. everything you had learned was telling you to do the opposite yeah, yeah. wind at your back abort abort yeah nah, we're gonna walk out there <laughs> element of surprise gone abort okay, no nope, yeah. we're going anyway i mean it was i don't know you you know that that thing you miss 100 percent of the shots you don't take yeah it's true it's true Very i didn't true. miss this one nope so we went out and uh and and at, at about 276 he turned he turned broadside and looked and i just put him down yeah. Just put him down. Did he drop right there or did he run? He 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 ran out of instinct. He, he probably went 20 yards and then just face planted. I mean, he Yeah, yeah, he just Yeah, he didn't he didn't fold and buckle right there. He ran about 20 yards and and then plowed dirt. Gotcha. So I was just like I I can't believe that whole thing just happened. <laughs> like we just you know, first morning, just first two hours in, and done. yeah, yeah. But you know, it was a, uh, it was still, um, it was still emotional, and it was still yeah. um, like every hunt where you, you just think about the the blessing that you were given, and the and the opportunity, and the people you're sharing it with, and and the preparation that goes into it, and the hours of studying, and and the hours of range time, whether it's bow or rifle or whatever, you know, and the 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 kill is such a small part of it to yeah. me um it's it's a i don't want to say anticlimactic it's part of the journey but it's the journey that i love so much yeah you know and uh and so you know we high-fived and hugged and oh, i can't believe this or whatever and i said well i'm gonna, I'm gonna i'll go back and get the truck because he's out there in this plowed field a little ways and and so we go and get the uh I go get the truck, pull up, and we start to walk, and the game warden pulled up. So we're talking 15 minutes later, game warden pulls up uh, and said, that was a good shot. <laughs> and so I guess uh, I guess he was watching from somewhere. <laughs> had his so, eyes on you, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, and, and my cousin had, had been in contact with the game warden, let him know kind of what area we were going to be hunting and all of that. So it wasn't a surprise that, that, uh, that you know, we – saw him out there and then I was so glad to see him there because you know my my big horn started with Texas Parks and Wildlife and I have such a huge respect for those guys and yeah sidebar story uh, my my cousin Mark his son Ethan is a, a game warden in Colorado oh no kidding yeah so you know always a special special place in our hearts for the game wardens yeah so so that was cool got to share it with him a little bit and uh 
Awesome. Yeah. So we went and picked him up, and that was that. And that, you had that a, was that. You had your pronghorn knocked out of the way. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I know your I know your cousin also also killed one. I'll I'll leave that story maybe for him to tell if we get yeah. the opportunity to have him on here and uh, kind of kind of share that side of it as well. But for now, we got a blank score sheet in front of us, and I know. I'm curious. Let's, yeah. Let's do this. So. So kind of to set the stage too, and I know, I know you did a lot of research and everything. I don't know if you are, how you feel, or I know we've talked before, but we're we're on air now. Yeah. <laughs> but I I don't know how you feel about judging on the hoof or or looking at one and and guesstimating a score. I I don't consider myself really great at it. I only have a couple of pronghorn hunts under my belt that I've been judging stuff off of and. I'm no professional scorer either for full transparency, but I, I take mine out and that's about all the pronghorn scoring experience I got. I, I'm guessing this joker around 60 ish is, is what I'm going to, is what I'll throw out there. And I might eat my words here in a little bit and look like an idiot if it's nowhere near that, but <laughs> I, I'm going to, I'm going to guess, I'm going to guess 56, 56. All right. Yeah, we got... I was going to say 60.1, you know, like on <laughs> Try to, try, or try to beat me on the high end there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know the the uh, the big horn I missed I missed by you know an eighth of an inch or whatever. So yeah. No, you're, yeah. you're I'm, I'm gonna miss this one. You're normally pretty close. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, not the score. I missed the record books. Oh yeah. By, yeah, yeah. By yeah, barely so, anything. So, well, so for record book on on this, so Boone and Crockett is is what we're scoring this because you you took it with a rifle. Mm -hmm. I looked up before I came over here. I was like, well, what, what's minimum record book for Boone and Crockett? What, what is the record? And it's a very narrow window, apparently. The, the, rec, the minimum to meet the record book, I believe, is 80. Oh, is wow. what they have it set at for Boone and Crockett. Pope and okay. Young is 66. Okay, that's what I, that's what I saw. Was but Boone and Crockett so. is 80, and the Boone and Crocker, Crockett record, according to their website, what was on there, what I saw, is only like 82. So wow. that's a very narrow window Absolutely. that some guys are in right now. So, um, and as for, as for Pope and Young, I don't remember what the record is. I think it's somewhere in that 80 or 90 range, but somewhere in there. But. You know, I did, I took, and we, we kind of talked earlier, but for those of them that's, that's listening, I took a, uh, the same approach to antelope as I did with deer, which is don't look at the antlers. Once you make a decision, that's the one. Yeah. Just don't look. Um, and so I, one of his uh what do you call this point? cutters the, the yeah. cutter is broke off on his right side so man that that's that's crazy I, I almost laughed when i saw it because on mine his cutter on his left side was broke now it was still hanging it was still attached yeah you told me that but it had it had broke too and that's how i knew which buck he was because we'd seen him before and, and honestly i was lucky he didn't break it all the way off because that thing it was just split like three quarters of the way down and it was still upright. But after I shot him, he ran a ways. And then oh. when he crashed and I found him, it was like down here, hanging on by a thread. Oh. And I was like, whew, I almost lost that thing yeah. somewhere along that journey. So I got lucky that it didn't bust off. Yeah. But. All right, so we're going to kick it off. We printed off what we did. Again, we're amateur scorers over here and not doing this at any official capacity. Just trying to kind of get a judge on what he is. But... Um, so we got the Boone and Crockett scoring sheet here printed off. So we're going to put our numbers in here that they asked for and uh, and go from that. Try to try to mark these as close as we can. Of course, if anybody's watching the video and they see us do a measurement that's wrong, then I guess you can say something if you want. <laughs> if you're so inclined, it's not going to change yeah. anything we do today. Yeah, but. We're, just, <laughs> we're, we're just playing here. And, and I did see, I was right, 80 and 82, it, it says here on the sheet, that's the, the minimum and the all-time record for Boone and Crockett. So... I didn't see any out there. I think that was that would make Boone and Crockett. That would be a Boone and Crockett pronghorn. You never know. They're you floating around know. out there sometimes. So, yeah. all right. So the first measurement that it asked for is the tip to tip spread. So we'll measure it right here from tip. Tip to tip. We're looking at six and three quarters. No, I, I got it over okay. here. If you just want to stay over there on mic. Oop, if I don't hit my mic, there we go. Something that was interesting about these horns is that, that I, I learned 
was they're made out of hair. Yeah. And uh, and I guess like you said before, you're gonna take some pictures. Yeah, we'll and, get some good pictures. And where for that sure. cutters broke off, if, um, you can see the hairs uh -oh. sticking up. Here we'll move, um, we'll move that. Get a little closer if you want to stand up. Oh, I can sit down. Yeah, but uh, you're gonna get a picture of that. You can see the hairs coming out from where that. Oh yeah. That was. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Yeah, I, I don't know if I've ever really seen that before. But yeah, apparently their hair just like grows into it or something like that. It, it, it's it's yeah, super weird. Th these critters are just are weird. And and I forget who it was who said it, but they they told me one time they were like pronghorn serve zero purpose. He's like I don't understand why they exist. He's like they're just out there and they just wander around. That's <laughs> that's that's all they do. They don't do anything else. And I, he yeah. told me that, and I was like. He's not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the second measurement is the inside spread. So I'm assuming it doesn't tell me anything else. So I'm assuming this is like a whitetail and just the greatest inside spread measurement, which would be somewhere right in here coming to about right there. We're going to call that nine inches. We'll say nine inches. And if you guys are listening and not watching, I apologize if there's some silence in between measurements here. But like I said, we're writing stuff down and measuring and doing all that good stuff. So, all right. So length of horn is the next one. And they they have us they have you measure so you can see on the basis how his hair kind of comes up and everything. So mm -hmm. you measure on the outside, and you're basically finding because there's some. Because this is hair, there's some gaps, so you're basically finding the highest point up where it's consistently all the way around and going from there. So, and while you're measuring that, I'll tell you, um, because of this, this uh, I'm assuming it's because of the program that, that my cousin was enrolled in with the, uh, the WMA uh, whatever it is <laughs> yeah um we had to take out the front two teeth the the two middle teeth on the bottom interesting um they don't have uh, antelope don't have top teeth they just have the bottom teeth they still have that palate or plate kind of like yeah. a whitetail does yeah yeah gotcha and so we we had to cut out the the bottom two teeth and send off for for aging and uh, you know whatever information they can get off on that so I'm assuming I'll get a report back, and that'll be pretty cool. Find out exactly how old he is. Yeah. So his his right horn measures 13 and a half, and his left horn is exactly one inch behind it at 12 and a half, awesome. as far as the the length. So what, I googled at one point what is it what is a good like what is a good antelope, and uh -huh. and it said uh, 11 inches is average. 12 inches is good. Yeah. 13 inches is exceptional. So. Yeah. So you're you're on the you're yeah. on the that threshold between good and exceptional yeah, right I'll there. Take so that. <laughs> there we are. All right. So now we're getting into again. There's not as many measurements on one of these things as there is a whitetail, obviously. So this next one is going to be the uh, circumference base, which going off of the measurements is for a pronghorn at the very the very base of the horn itself so go here as low as we can get this is the left one here in texas you know i shot him on opening morning of the season and then whenever i was uh, skinning him i noticed how easy the hair the hair just like fell out yes i noticed that with mine too when i killed yeah. mine back in 18 that was the same way was it this time of year? Yes, it was. What day did you kill yours on? On the uh, second. I killed October mine 2nd. October first, twenty eighteen. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I was afraid that you know the hair is slipping, you know, because being, you know, Waylon being the taxidermist, you know, I, I've heard that before, and yeah. it's, you know, you always want to take care of them and get that hide, you know, taken care of before, uh, before the hair starts slipping. Right. And so whenever, as soon as I started skinning this thing, I was, clumps of hair was coming off. But what I found is I found out that it's at this time of year, they're shedding their summer coat, getting their winter coat. Yeah. So it's just, 
that that's just all that's going on right so, now. So so funny story w- with mine. We we had him. I, I had him shoulder mounted. You know, it was actually the first animal I ever had shoulder mounted. And I noticed I was like, man, his coat's really weird. My wife, she told me she said, well, get like what you don't have shoulder mounted. Like get his butt, like just the hide tan. I was like, are you serious right now? I was like, <laughs> yeah. you want his butt hot tan? You want the hide tan? She goes, yeah, I do. Like, we'll just drape it over a chair or something, you know, just to be kind of cool. And long story short, in the end now, it does look cool sitting on a chair in So my you office. had it done. I had it done. <laughs> I don't recommend it. I don't recommend it at all. It ain't worth it. <laughs> don't do it. Because, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it looks cool, but the second you sit down, you come off with antelope hair oh, on your yeah. back. Yeah. So you can't – it's got to be in a chair nobody sits in. It's, yeah. it's decorative only. It's just yeah. – it's not worth it. Just I'm, shoulder mount them and that's it. Just be yeah. done with it. So – that's my recommendation. So his circumference, both bases, for my measurements, I'm measuring the same six and five eighths is the circumference on both bases. So this, the next measurement, again, we're going off of circumferences, is going to be uh, the first quarter. So with a whitetail, you know, you measure, you measure the bases, and then I believe you're measuring like in between each time. Mm-hmm. So with him, we measure the base, and then we're going to come up to kind of right in here below his cutter. Okay. And we're going to measure again, is according to the to the fancy diagram that Boone and Crockett's got here. So awesome! And you were able to just download that off of a website? And yes. So it off so and... Boone and Crockett has for for anybody interested, they have all the score sheets for any animal that they have that you can score. You can go to their website and you can print them off. A- any score sheet you want. So whitetail, bear moose elk yeah. you name it they got it so if if anybody ever wants to have a score sheet handy or you're wanting to just tape your own animal out just to get an idea on what it is because i mean that's what i did with pope and young pope and young has a similar thing too so um yeah you can just go to their website and download a score sheet so so we got six inches on the left one and six and one eighth for this uh first quarter circumference uh an eighth is a difference here so second quarter is going to be above the cutter right here after it comes back in so that one's looking like four a little four and an eighth on that one he does and, and again I'm I have only had my hands on really one good pronghorn, and that was my own. So I don't know if I'm the best judge. The left uh, horn's the same, four and an eighth. Um, the well, you got a you got a point of reference. To, I have a point. Of, I have a point of reference, but but my I guess my point being what I was going to say is to me he looks heavy, like he has a good a good strong amount of mass. And I don't know if from the video they can tell really well, but I mean. It's, it's, it's the diameter of your fingers yeah. right there. So, turn it that way too. Yeah. All right. So the circumference. We got the third quarter, which is going to be the last uh, circumference measurement, which is going to. It looks like it's right here where he starts to kind of hook on each side. So mm-hmm. right here toward the end. Yeah, his left hook has broke off just a little bit. Yeah, too. he's rubbed that off a little bit. Oh, it's a, it's one inch shorter. So I'm guessing an inch. Yeah, somewhere in there probably. I mean, he's he's a relatively symmetrical goat. He does this one. His left one does start the curve a little earlier than this one, so I don't know exactly how that would have played out. But all right, so this one we got two and three quarters for the left one for that final circumference measurement, and on this one. about two and seven eighths so just slightly bigger so a one eighth difference again all right so the last measurement that they have is the the length of the prong so the cutter is what they're calling the prong and we're going to measure all the way from the back of the horn to the very tip of the prong um, i believe on the outside 
And if I'm wrong, somebody can comment on here and be a Debbie Downer and correct me. <laughs> yeah. For four inches on the nose for the left one. I'll be off mic for a second on this next one. All right, so it'll go from from there to. All right, so that second one we're going to call three, and that's because he's broke. I bet he would have been every bit of four, if not more, on that side if he yeah. hadn't been broke. So one difference there. All right, so now we're going to add all these together which is always the fun part I gotta convert some of these to eighths because I don't ever write them down right so while you're while you're adding something that I learned about pronghorns is they don't jump fences they only go under fences yes and so did did yours have this in the, on the back this like sores on like not sores but like scrapes on the so he didn't have those quite like that i was looking at that because he's on this back side we'll get a picture of it he's almost rubbed down to he is rubbed down to the skull to the, oh um, to the skull yeah you can yeah. see why right there like yeah. it's crazy so my cousin's is way worse than this one really and so i called waylon who's a taxidermist yeah. you know and was like hey what do you think this is you know because i didn't know you know, is it, is it some kind of parasite or something? And he's yeah. like, man, I guarantee you it's uh, where they were been going under fences. And and then it was like, well, duh, that's exactly what that is, is, you know, that's just rubbing it from going underneath the fence. Cause that's the yeah. only place it is, is right there on the back of his head. And um, yeah. All right. So for, and I'm, I'm, Kelly's talking while I'm adding here, but. Um, for the right horn, what it totals out at, um, all the measurements combined like you're supposed to add them, he's got 36 and 2 eighths on his right. Wow. So we're on pace to break that 60 now. Yeah. And, and again, that's his, that's his right. That's his. Yeah. Now, this one has the cutter broke, but this side has the, the is about an inch shorter yeah. on the, on the main, the the actual horn length yeah, so I'm, we'll see how this comes out here wouldn't it be crazy if it measures out symmetrical I, although it's, it, not it's gonna symmetrical. it's gonna be <laughs> honestly it's gonna be pretty close I, yeah so i i am not a fan of how of how they do deductions i think and this is my personal opinion i feel like it takes away from like the true the true score of the animal yeah. when you take the put the deductions in there but we're gonna well obviously we'll tell you what it is with and without the deductions but yeah um, all right, let me finish this one. You know, the, my next hunt on my, on my hit list is that mule deer hunt. And uh, it's going to be so much different than the antelope because what I learned also about antelope is they will not go where they can't see. Uh -huh. So anything that's up, they, they won't like go out there and lay down to be safe. They'll go out in the middle of an open field and lay down, and then their, their white bodies kind of give them away. But uh, while we were up there looking, there were – we saw a bunch of mule deer and they're exactly opposite of that. And they, they laid down in, in nothing and was, were just still while we drove by them. And so I thought that was kind of an interesting. That's a good thing to think about if you're hunting around a water hole, make sure you hunt around a water hole where the weeds aren't tall because they won't come to that water. Yeah, that's very true. I'm excited to see how old he is because he, he was, like I said, he was a lot bigger. And then uh, his his neck is full rut. And I noticed that there was no other bucks in, in his group. All the other bucks that we saw the other couple of days we were there, they, they still had like a bachelor group, I guess was what you would call them, or a yeah. herd that had two or three bucks. Yeah. And uh, so what I'm hoping is he's just an old dude that, don't have time to mess with them young kids, you know, <laughs> and beat them on out of there. So, All right, you ready? Yep. Okay. So this goat, we were both wrong, first okay. off. We were both off. So this goat tapes out. Once you take the – once you factor in the deductions, he's 70. Wow. 70 inches. 
And I th- honestly, I think a lot of that is the mass. I think the mass is what gives him 70. Yeah, that's what I noticed too. So was the whenever I saw him out there, the mass is what kind of set him apart. Yeah. The neck mass, but also the 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 horn. Yeah. I keep wanting to say antlers, but I, I do the too. I, I make the mistake all the time. So, but he 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 tapes out before deductions at 72 and two eighths, and he's got two inches and two eighths difference which is the wow. deductions so that puts him at 70 inches even for his fine again wow all, our final yeah. score a, a, a boone the, and crockett score might come in here and be like man y'all are so yeah. wrong but that's the, what i'm getting the denton so. county fall <laughs> obsession fun in the shop score is yeah. 70 the shop awesome. podcast score is 70 yeah, so absolutely 70 inches so that man that's a that's a stud goat that's man that's a cool deal not that's one that you don't pass on for sure. So that 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 score really it, it surprised me. I knew he was going to score well because of the mass, like you said. Yeah. But I, I looked at the mass and I figured he'd be in the 60s. But again, I was going off of off of mine, which probably isn't quite. I mean, the bases are probably similar, but he's not as heavy all the way through as yours. Um, but he's taller. So I, I going off of that, I was like, man, this he's this boy is probably about 60, but. I, I misjudge his mass. He's he's got a lot of mass on him, so he's a, he's a good one. Awesome. But I'll let you hold on to that. If yeah, you want. for sure. So that's awesome. That's, Thank uh, you. That's what I got for for measurements and everything. So it, it's yeah. kind of the way it printed out. It's kind of hard to see the the template there. It it, it is there. It's just yeah. really faded. But very cool. Well, man, that like I said, a stud animal and. I really appreciate you coming on to to tell your story and 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 letting us score on the podcast and on video too. This is I I know we were talking before, but I don't I can't think of another podcast where I've watched a video and they have a not like a mount, but like a dead <laughs> animal just sitting in between them. They're taping it out while they're recording the podcast and hanging out. So. Yeah, we're shooting flies <laughs> away from the deal and I'm, I'm wondering about you know getting it back on ice. And yeah, all he of needs that. to go back in the freezer <laughs> soon. Probably we've been gawking at him for a while. But, yeah, uh, and I know you're going to take him to taxidermist yeah, yeah. here before too long. But for sure, but. I, I yeah. mean, obviously you got the cape, so I guess you're doing the full shoulder and everything. And yeah, we're going to do a pedestal mount. A pedestal. And, I was uh, going to ask what kind, but yeah, we're going to do a pedestal mount, and um, you know, hopefully be able to put everything on there. Yeah. Hopefully, I'll I'll be able to, uh, you know, get my mule deer and be one step closer. Well, that'll be my final step. You know. Yeah, you got to. Uh, I mean, a white tail. I got to get a white tail this and year. And the javelina, but the, uh, the I mean, the mule deer is the big, the next yeah. big challenge, if you will. Yeah. So. I appreciate Fall Obsession documenting it and, and being a part of the the journey, man. It just means the world man, to me, I, man. I, I'm glad we can do what we can with this. I know I know we were, we've been talking and texting the past couple of weeks back and forth, and you've yeah. been trying to talk me into going out there with you and videoing, and I, I, I really wanted to, but at the same time, it was opening weekend of deer season on the yeah. new lease, and I couldn't miss that. And But I, I, I'm hoping – I'm hoping we can figure something out to have somebody with you to actually video your mule deer hunt, and then obviously if you get a if you get a mule deer, and, and of course if you finish the slam, we'll, we'll yeah. have to get you back on here and yeah, do something we'll else because this step. is this is a journey. Like I said at the beginning, that very few have the opportunity to take or or to just take in general. So uh, the fact that you're doing that doing it's pretty pretty awesome, and we're happy to be along to to share it and document it for you. Thank you. If, if we would have got you out there to video it, we I had the perfect soundtrack for it. It was <laughs> and you could pet, play it like in a little slow motion burst of us walking out there the, and stopping. The video, the, the video's titled, you know, most amateur pronghorn hunters. Yeah, do not do yeah. that. Here's what these hunters are doing wrong. Well, yeah. man, I mean they're curious creatures, and and that book played into that. You know, even though y'all were out there in the open, and man, it worked out. Obviously, you got one sitting on the table here yeah, between us. It did. So. It did. Well, man, we'll we'll wrap it up. We'll hop off here. I know we're, we'll get some pictures while before this thing goes back on ice and uh, get some pictures of them real quick. And, of course, when we get the mount back or you get the mount back, we'll come back out and photograph them some more for you. Yeah, but, cool. Um, again, I appreciate you coming on. It's yeah. fun getting to hang thank out you. and hear the story and, and tape, a, tape a goat out on camera with you. I enjoyed yeah. it. Well, thank you for, for doing it. You bet. I appreciate you. All right, guys. Well, thank you all for listening or watching. If you're watching the video, if you're just listening and not watching, I encourage you guys to go check it out. It's a pretty pretty cool setup that Cato's got here. And then uh, obviously you get to see the goat and all that too. And 
some of this stuff might make a little more sense when it comes to the taping out if you're watching but appreciate you guys tuning in if you haven't already go hit that follow and subscribe button on whatever platform you're listening or watching on we're on all major podcast platforms as well as our website fallobsession.com and our youtube channel uh, be sure you subscribe to that youtube we got multiple new videos a week coming out right now if you go to our website fallobsession.com slash podcast you guys can find a form on there you can fill out in addition to seeing all of our podcast episodes and the videos that we've done and stuff if you want to send us feedback you can do it from that page guests or topic suggestions are welcome as well um, follow us on all the social media platforms facebook instagram subscribe i already said subscribe to our youtube quick shout out too to our friends over at elite archery we moved this sponsor spot to the back of the episode and i almost forget about it every time because we do it but um, we are partnering with elite happy to happy to have that the case so if you haven't shot an elite bow yet, go to your local dealer, pick one up, try it, see if it's right for you, take their shootability challenge, and check them out at EliteArchery.com. They're great equipment, and we wouldn't be shooting them if we didn't believe in them. So go check them out. And finally, if you guys uh, have the opportunity to, or if you're an Apple Podcast listener, leave us a review on uh, Apple Podcast. Five stars if you think we're worth it, and if we're not, go to that webpage I told you all about and tell us why we're not. That way we can make the podcast better. So... Appreciate y'all tuning in, Kelly. Thank you again. Appreciate you you coming on. Appreciate you. And we will be back with you guys next week for another Monday morning Fall Obsession podcast episode. We'll catch you then.